like wine, beer is not meant to be aged. Uh, it's, it's best when it's fresh, the fresher the better. You don't want to age it, you don't want to cellar it. The, the closer to the source, the better. The fresher, the better. Rhein Heights Gebot is a uh, beer purity law in Germany from, uh, from 1516. The beer purity law is, uh, is basically a, a, a law that states that you can brew beer with just four ingredients, just hops, yeast, malt, and water. Way back when, in the early 1500s, um, people had gotten away from the simplistic and natural state of beer. In essence, they were basically fermenting anything that could provide uh, sugars. Uh, and be fermented. I mean, you can extract sugar from all types of grains and then eventually make alcohol out of it. Obviously, Germans take beer pretty seriously. Uh, the idea of beer being something that's made cheaply and, and inefficiently is just not going to happen. You, it's got to be done the old way. The logic behind the law was basically to create some standards. The law was in place so that people were only using the finest ingredients. Some people say that, uh, you know, why, what, why do you follow the beer purity law? It, it, you know, doesn't that limit your creativity? Really, that's ridiculous. The, the varieties of malt available, barley or wheat, the variety of yeast strains, hop strains, and the ways in which we can process them to create the beer style we'd like to achieve is literally infinite. To me, the art of beer making is to take those four ingredients and create something wonderful. Well, what you see now with bigger breweries is they use things like corn and rice and beer because both those both those things release fermentable sugars, but they don't add any sort of body or flavor to the beer. It says it right on their label, the finest barley and rice, because uh, it's cheaper and you can make alcohol out of it. What that means is that they are driven by the bottom line. Those forces are contrary to our goal of producing the best quality beer. One could argue that today we're in the same situation they were in just before Kim Ludwig enacted the law, <laughs> where everybody's throwing everything but the kitchen sink into beer, uh, thinking that's cool. Uh, but you know, I would say that uh, you know, it, it's more of a challenge to make a great beer with four ingredients than it is to make a cocktail. So the Rheinheitsgebot, I mean, that is that is the tradition that we that we hold on to, that we honor with the way that we brew. It's not necessarily a law, but it's a, it's a philosophy, and it's our philosophy. We follow it out of respect, uh, not out of re any requirement. It's our law. We consider it something paramount in how we make beer, and we won't change that. The second philosophy, besides using the best ingredients possible, is serving the beer as fresh as possible. We, you know, we don't pasteurize our beer, we don't put preservatives in our beer, and so the onus is really on us to get that beer into market, to get it properly stored at all times, and to get those kegs and bottles turned around as fast as we can. In principle, our, our goal is to produce the freshest highest quality beer possible. And to do that, our philosophy is to use the best quality ingredients. There's four core ingredients in beer. Your, your yeast, your malt, your hops, and your water. That's it. And that's all we ever use. And to process them in a way that maximizes the flavor and nutrition in beer. We believe that this is the way beer should taste.